Spaceship is any word more exciting in the English language. Uh, certainly the very basis, the heart of Star Citizen is the fantasy that you can own and operate and explore and battle in spaceships. So it's incredibly important that we come up with a process for you know, creating these spaceships to a high degree of fidelity, both uh, how they work in the universe and how they work in our very complex game. And uh, today we're going to look at how that happens. Probably the very first thing we do in the process of creating a ship is come up with the role. That's the absolute most important thing. It's about uh, taking Chris's vision along with the information supplied by Ben Lesnick for, you know, if it's a new ship, what its functions are, and then from there, working with the concept artists and fully realizing a ship. So basically it works for design, it works for the game, looks cool, fits in with the manufacturer. The next step is that we essentially put together a design document. How does this ship work? Here's how it should work, here's how many thrusters it has. It has, you know, this checklist of things. It needs five escape pods, it needs bunks for six people, and the concept artist takes, you know, our ramblings and turns it into a, uh, a beautiful concept model. Who's one of our concept artists? Um, basically, we're looking at the Javelin. Uh, which is undergoing second pass concept, so you know, the, he sort of fully understands um, what's involved for this manufacturer and just taking all that design language um, that we've established already and putting it onto the Javelin so that so basically it's consistent, it's good for the UEE, you know, when you see it you're like, okay, that's an Aegis UEE ship, all the cues are consistent. Again, you can see the sort of level of detail that Dan's putting into the work panel lines, uh, all the decals, again, you know, from, you'll see here from this thruster, there's a similarity. And this, this task will take a couple of weeks, and then of course running it past Chris, just make sure he's got final sign off. So once Paul's done with the concept and pretty much discovery phase, we call it sometimes, with his team, it then goes into a phase that we call white box. Um, the white box is essentially the very raw bare bones of the ship. It's not pretty, but it's functional. And the key with the stage of the white box when it comes to larger ships such as the Idris or the Javelin is to understand, can we make it work? Um, so the design team will flesh out a white box interior, for example. And on a given day, I may go in and go, well, is this gonna technically work? If we stand the player in this corner of the ship and he's drawing the whole ship, then that's not going to work. We've got the Idris hanger, okay, the Idris has got a lot of detail inside, obviously we can't draw that all the time. So we have to set the interior and design the interior around being as efficient as possible. As you bring the camera around, you'll see that it will actually start streaming in all of that geometry and all of that fog. If I take it back, it completely does it in reverse. The advantage of that is that we can throw more detail inside and not worry about the cost of it from outside. Um, and just generally, a massive improvement with frame rate, massive improvement on memory costs. So that's the purpose of the white box, is to identify problems before they turn up in the pipeline. The next step is that the, the high resolution, super detailed model that our concept artists come up with is given to our technical designers here at the company. Grey box is essentially taking the white box to final geometry. Everything should be identifiable um, in, its, in its current form, just with polygons. Uh, this is Starfarer, actually. It's uh, not been seen by the public yet, but it's, this is a really good example of um, a grey box. This is the cargo bay of that ship. You'll notice there's no textures, there's no shaders, it's just kind of just grey checker box. Um, so this is pretty much kind of final geometry now and is, is ready to go into production. It's taking shape quite nicely. So we'll then kind of break this down into various kind of modular elements that we can kind of pull away, assign those to the team to kind of crack on with. The interior of the ship for me is a map. It's a multiplayer map. It's certainly bigger than a multiplayer the map. And it has to be fun to walk around and you have to be able to navigate it easy. And these are all the things that we try to apply very, very early on. So it goes from grey box here, and then it'll go into final art production here, and that's a, a, good, a good example to look at right now. Um, she's pretty much done. From there, that's handed on to tech design. In tech design, we pretty much take all the other areas uh, on the project and glue them together to make 
pretty spaceships actually fly and behave as you'd expect. We take the, the mesh and we split it up how it's going to fall apart in game. So the nose will come off, body splits here, wings come off. So we create the actual hierarchy, which is one of the key things animation need. So they can get their animations in and as long as that hierarchy stays the same, those animations will, will be fine. Everything else can change around it. When the modelers and artists get to a gray box phase of the ship, they hand it off to me and I break out certain geometries, set up hierarchies, name the different objects, and then animate them within Max. And in this case, uh, we have the Aegis Vanguard here, and the, the wings are able to deploy and retract. It's my job to animate all these on the proper axis so nothing clips in, it all works correct mechanically. So we animate it opening, animate it closing, add some tension in there. And then we have back here, we've got this cargo bay that opens up and lets you into the interior of the ship. In addition to that, I'll break out different components, like we'll uh, take out the seat to where we animate the character entering and exiting the ship. Any ship interaction he has, typically we'll animate all those in motion boulders and export that for the character. The, the next step in the ship process, the one that everybody else sees, is that it becomes hangar ready. It'll pop up in your Star Citizen hangar, you know, if, if you have bought that particular ship and you get to explore it and see what's inside. It takes a lot of work to get the ships in-game to the, the standard we want and the, the standard the fans want for them. We have backers come round. Every time they sit with the ship team, they're completely blown away by the amount of work that isn't seen in the final product. Once Jay's animated all the sections of the ship that need animation, um, landing gears, doors, anything like that, um, it's ready then to go to, to fine tuning.